And welcome, guys, to another burning discussion. I am your host, Extermicide, and I am joined tonight by Ludo, Vladis, Roar, and uh, uh, Enrique, yes. <laughs> and uh, Mebat may be running a little late. He may show up. He may not. We don't know. Um, spots open for him if he does appear. We are on the tail end here of what we just had a, as what was considered to be a massive preview the mage preview and I'm, I'm going to be honest i am probably in the minority here um i wasn't overly impressed with the freaking stream but i'm like i said i'm most likely in the minority and by all means guys i i have i honestly have no freaking idea why i wasn't didn't have my socks knocked off with the stream so hopefully you guys if you did like the stream, you're going to be able to convince me or, or tell me why I should like it more than I do. But if you feel the same way I do, then maybe you can actually shed some light on the maybe as to why I feel this way. Because I honestly don't know why I'm feeling this way towards this particular stream. Um, I, I play a spell a spellcaster usually. And I, I, I was looking forward to this stream and just something about it just didn't tickle my fancy so <laughs> i'm gonna go with with roar first because he's usually our most opinionated freaking uh guy on the panel here and i just want to know where where did you stand with the stream this week uh this week i think i think vladis takes the most opinionated on the mage reveal but uh um he's next <laughs> i mean i've had a lot of conversations about that and it was good. Like it looked good. It looked like it played good. I liked the combos, the synergies between the different debuffs. I think it was it. it I and I know that there's going to be different stages and tiers of of levels of abilities as you dump in skill points. I don't know what tiers they're showing us. Um, some of them seemed pretty broken for like a base tier. So I imagine that. It's all just kind of testing, and eventually they're going to level that out and break it into different tiers. So you're gonna have to put skill points into it. But I mean, it was a mage, and it looked and it looked really, really good. Um, you know, there's that joke. Vladis and I have had this joke that it's it's literally a World of Warcraft mage. They took all of the best, literally, spell for spell, effect effect of the World of Warcraft's frost mage. I feel like. Whoever was designing those frost abilities probably plays a frost mage in WoW, um, because they're like the 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 chill debuff that stacks up to make you frozen, and then you have to shatter it, like word for word, effect for effect, straight from World of Warcraft. Um, except they didn't use deep freeze. Um, but other than that, it looked cool. Uh, it looked like it played really good. Obviously, um, you know, he went, once he started actually, you know, the guy. That was piloting it, not Steven, but the other guy. Once he actually got in there and started using combos, it was really interesting to see how it played instead of, um, you know, Steven just kind of fumbling around with it. But uh, it's a mage. It wasn't it wasn't groundbreaking by any means. It didn't reinvent any wheels. Uh, it was just a mage. And I think it, they think for what Ashes of Creation is trying to be, I think it's on the right path. I, I Like I said, I was totally unimpressed. Might be too much of a, too strong of a... Uh description but i just i wasn't overwhelmed uh, under underwhelmed. underwhelmed. Uh, yeah i was very underwhelmed but i did i checked <laughs> videos on youtube afterwards and everybody was praising this month's stream and i i, I for the life of me I'm, I'm i'm listening to them i'm watching the videos i'm hearing the same information over and over again and for some reason it was just when i watched it it was just lackluster for me and i, I don't get it vladis where where'd you stand on it um, I mean, similar to Roar, I mean, there's just a lot of questions that I have. Um, and this is the problem for someone like myself that has never really played an alpha of an MMO before. I have played betas of expansions uh, of an MMO, but never like a true testing bed of a brand new game that has not been out yet. Um, because we're at a level 15 period. We've been at a level 15 period with all of these archetypes. I don't know how to properly leave feedback to that because every level 15 character feels like crap. Like you're, it, it's supposed to feel like crap. You're level 15. Like you're not max level. Like I, I've never played a game probably other than Lost Ark um, that felt good at level 15. Um, but I think Lost Ark is a very different kind of MMO compared to the traditional kind of MMO. Um, 
so for me, it's it's really hard to leave feedback. And with the interactions, I there's two major things, actually three major things. Mana consumption is is one of my concerns. We didn't see any mana cost to any of the spells. Mages traditionally are mana consuming people. Like they they run out of mana quickly, um, but they are devastating when it comes to like attacks. Um, but we didn't get to see any of that kind of balance. So it just looked like, okay, we're showing you these abilities, but so that's, that's one concern. Um, the second concern when he, is when, when, when Steven's employee started playing instead of Steven, didn't they turn everything off? They turned cooldowns back on, not mana. It was still mana uh, was always, just the cool there was still no mana okay. cost. Yes. Um, so I think they're really trying to see at a fundamental level, do these spell interactions, are they good? But my whole thing is, the second problem I have is, are we going to have all of those abilities at level 15? Or is this just for testing? Because then I, I can't I can't really give good feedback if saying, oh, yes, all of these abilities, if you are at level 15, feel good. But then, oh, no, 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 well, we're not going to give you all of these abilities at level 15. You're actually probably only going to have three abilities. Well, then how can I properly feedback if this is not what we're actually going to have in the game? So that's my second problem. The third problem I have is PvP interaction. Because with these spells and with how they want you to go from one spell element to another to perform these chains or these combos, how does that work in groups? This isn't a, this isn't a solo game. And, and again, if people think, oh, well, they're going to be totally independent with one another. Well, then we also have a stun component. So you mean to tell me that now we're going to have to chain stun? So, like, you know what I mean? Because if it's all solo and we have our own interactions with our own mages, if you're in a group of five other mages, are you going to have to, like, is the meta going to be, oh, we're going to have to wait for your stun to go off, and then you cast your thing, and then you're going to stun with yours, and then you're going to stun with yours? Like, you know what I mean? Because so, it stacks, and you get each stack opens up with whatever that right. next thing is. Okay. Right. And, and again, it, it's... It's just hard for me, right? Like this is a very much a me problem. I but I look at these spells, and the one thing I notice right off the bat is that they are uh, way less intensive as far as like the the you know wazoo kind of crazy spell effects they had in Alpha One, which is good. Uh, they're starting to temper down the graphics, which I liked all of them, and I. And I was in the process of making a video that I haven't released yet for the mage comparing the WoW. Uh, effects to the ones we saw for ashes and i think that they are there are toned down very similarly but i think the ashes ones look way better in comparison if you were to see them side by side it's very stark like i think the ashes ones look really what do you what do you think going, going back to what you just said are you lagging yeah i think he is what are you there frozen i frozen yeah, your camera froze. No, your camera froze, but okay, oh, it sounds sorry. like your audio is okay. It's coming back. Okay, okay. So going going back to uh, just a second for what you like what you were saying with the PvP. Steve's favorite spell was that globe. Now, can can you imagine one of these castle sieges, and you got team versus team, and there's all of a sudden thirty of those globes floating towards your team and everything? What what that's gonna be like on your screen? I mean, it's 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 a lot, you know, when it comes to what your computer is going to take in as far as everything else. Um, but I just feel like the PvP interactions is a big one. The AOE sleep. I mean, that's kind of broken, in my opinion. I don't think a mage should have an AOE sleep to that. And if it is, it's not going to be a third. Range. Yeah. And it, it's not going to that has to be like a three minute cooldown, like easy. Like that's can't be anything less than a minute. But again, that's another problem I have is, is the fact of utility. How much utility do they want each class to have? Because if we have support classes, they should have the bulk of the utility. So, Ludo, one of the things that uh, I when I when I think spellcaster, especially mage, I always think typical glass cannon. And here I am watching Steve and this other guy spending five minutes killing a flower. <laughs> the, 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 again, this is something that was very underwhelming to me. Um, do you, do, do you want to see more damage from the mage to, or do, or what you saw there that suffices? Because I, I, I honestly w didn't see a whole lot of damage coming from this particular class. I have mixed feelings because I feel like I would have to see a talent tree first and see like different ways that you could spec the mage. in. so 
if it takes you that long, are you taking a long time because you're specced more for defense? Then okay, that's fine. But if you're specced as a glass cannon, like what you're expecting, then yeah, it should take less time to kill that flower. That was too long, I feel, for a glass cannon. But I also worry if you kill something that's your level easily, then we're going to run into, like with classic WoW, with mages just pulling packs of enemies, freezing them, and just killing them all at the same time. And I, I don't really want to see that in Ashes. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence on how I feel about that. I, I Sure, I, I think it was fine. Um, Is, I wouldn't want to see them kill that much faster. Because even Steve's employee there almost died to one of those flowers in that one-on-one -on -one fight. Good. And I was actually kind of like, eee. Good. I mean, the whole point of Ashes is it's it's trying to push you to play with others. So, yeah, I, I feel that this is fine. In an MMO, Enrique, what class do you usually play? I've played every single class and uh, that you can imagine. I play healer, I play tank, I play DPS. Actually, tank would be the one I've played least. Uh, but I play healer and DPS equally, and I've played magic, I've played rogue, I've played you know, ranger, hunter, but whatever what you want. What is your go-to class? You really don't have one? I, I okay. just don't have one. really don't have one. But uh, what I can say about this is I, I think we'd all agree that at least the the angle that they took on how they presented things Absolutely. was better. Compared to the tank. Like, yes. We'd all been complaining yeah. about yes. everything was just noise. And they just sat down and said, here's what this ability does, here's what that ability does. So I really like that. That was definitely positive. But I, I just think that the underwhelming aspect of this comes from the same thing that we've been saying all along, which is that there's no cohesive idea of how this game, Ashes, is going to play differently, differently than other MMOs. In fact, it almost seems like it doesn't want to. It wants to be very similar. Like we were saying, this is like almost a World of Warcraft uh, mage adapted to the Ashes look and everything. Um, so... The only thing that we might be seeing is the slowing down towards the more old-fashioned MMO, the EverQuest style thing, which obviously, if if you were comparing this to EverQuest DPS, this is a lot of DPS. So you don't know how fast things are supposed to die. And honestly, I, I don't know if this is what Ludo was getting at, but I actually prefer that fights just take a little bit longer. Um, I think World of Warcraft, it was fun and I enjoyed it, but, but I prefer it to be just a little bit longer so that things have more time to develop strategy wise. You can respond to things and it's not just twitchy, you know, it's not so much twitch and responding really quick to a timer. And when you see that guy do that, do this. Um, so I was, I liked it. I liked, uh, the, uh, mage. I, it's, it's almost exactly what I expected them to show. The only thing that I would say is there's just no cohesive idea as to how this game is going to be different. Like what, what would tell or bring somebody to play this game if I said, I'm, I'm only interested in gameplay. How is this going to be different? You have to start going into the way that like PvP is going to happen, that it's open world, that it's stuff, the systems around it. But the gameplay, it'd be hard to describe what, what makes it. Well, the lightning game. can go around corners. I was, I was going to bring right, that right, up around, and, yes, and ask bit. what you guys felt about that with the, uh, yeah, that, that, that. <laughs> chain lightning going around the tree stump and getting the enemy on the other side because every MMO, i think it's cool. every mmo i've ever played line of sight is everything and if they can't see you they can't hit you and now you're saying we got homing missile abilities you know um i i oh well, it's gonna be like special abilities that do it yeah i wouldn't say every ability is gonna have that kind of uh, I think he mentioned specifically with the chain lightning. I don't think you're going to be able to curve your frost bolts around corners. Um, it, he, he mentioned it's a behavior that they have assigned to certain abilities. Yes. I don't have a problem with it. I, I don't think my whole thing, and this is something that I saw very apparently in this showcase and in almost in every other showcase, they have to like pathing for monsters has to get better because if it's going to be classic wow where you can just oop and then go on this thing and then the monsters go all the way around <laughs> you know like we live in 2023 man this is in 2004 Can't like get you on the other pathing, side of that bush yes pathing needs to be better and if you say because steven has said this that ashes of creation is not going to be the 
easy kind of MMO. Ashes of Creation is going to be a hard MMO. Well, hard to me means a monster can go straight to you, and you need to have a really good monster path, and regardless of terrain, regardless of you jumping off cliffs, they need to get to you to create that sense of danger. And if he, he was saying it was hard because of the escort quests. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I just want pathing to be better because it, we've seen pathing now for a while be this way. And I, I, again, I know it's a testing bed, but I'm just saying, I hope that is definitely something on their radar to uh, keep improving, but it needs not only to be at an eight out of 10, it needs to be a 10 out of 10 when it comes to pathing. There, there was a split second there at the very beginning of the stream where I was excited and that's because I saw 16 abilities on the screen at once. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And then it's like. About time. Yeah. And then it's like, well, we're not going to be showcasing the fire or the earth abilities at all. And I'm like, ah, oh, come on. You know, it's like. At least yeah. If you, I don't see any wind. So we're, we're not completely in Captain Planet territory, but we're, we're getting there. Yeah, I, I think there's one that's on earth. And I, we definitely have the fire there. I think uh, one, someone's yeah. video actually kind of magnified as they he moused over all the abilities so they actually got the names of most of the abilities and there there was a meteor there was a fireball yes roar <laughs> oh i did that i got pathing i i definitely agree with you vladis i think that's one of the things i saw in there that i didn't like i'm not sold on the whole homing missile type thing with the uh with the uh that that particular lightning um chain lightning also, on, on the subject of pathing, did anyone notice the blink actually worked correctly going uphill? Yes. Because you, you, you've you complained about that like a dozen times in other yes. shows. So. Well, because I really like Shadow Step on the Rogue. So that's kind of important for me. And and then seeing the blink that was fixed, I, I thought that was and awesome. And I do like and the I even visual like the improvements when, uh, they made to it. Yeah. And I, I like too when he's going downhill, how he like blinked straight out and then just fell down. I thought that was kind of cool. Now, as a mage, did anybody else feel that this guy looked like budget Gandalf? <laughs> like, yeah, like, but like, I, didn't, I didn't expect yeah. much. Ever. Yeah, poverty. Uh, Usually when you get to... these kind of videos, you know, they kind of deck you in some kind of good mage gear to kind of give you an idea of what you're going to be able to get. And it was like they went to pay less and got the cheapest of whatever they could get and just slapped it on this freaking guy. I also noticed that they yeah, kept, he looks like a pig. You also noticed they kept the camera view out pretty far and never really uh, zoomed in a lot. So what, what was that? Blattis? I just wanted to ask Enrique a question for, you know, for someone like me, like, you know, I, you, you've been a, a game dev for a bit now. And in your standpoint, like how, if you were going to write a forum post, how would you structure what you saw and what would you critique? Because for me, I don't think damage is something to critique in this kind of showcase. It's not about the damage. There's so much more at a fundamental level of like, do these abilities work? Do you like how we mix and match them? Do you like the interaction? Is that like, I just want to know your thoughts, like as to how you would go about like writing a forum post and critiquing what the mage showcase was. Well, that's a good question, but I'm not sure that I'd be able to really be any more knowledgeable about it than you guys. I, I know that when I receive feedback as a developer myself, because we're so limited in resources, that if it's not something that I can change within a few days of work, it just feels like, oh man, like this guy doesn't like the game at all. I can't just like scrap the whole thing. So for them in, a, in the position at the speed at which they're working and everything, I think you could say something like that. And, and, you know, the critique could be something like we need to see more of sort of the how does it feel this particular mage? How is it going to feel different than my World of Warcraft mage or any other mage in any other game? And what's the driving principle behind it? I've given feedback before and been kicked out of a studio when I said um, your, your game is not game enough for me and so like um th this was uh, I, I guess i don't even know if it's an nda it doesn't matter it's an old <laughs> game it, it was a uh, gearbox and there was a game i think it was called band of brothers or something like that i i don't remember what it was exactly but it was like you would shoot the guy in cover and he would come out of cover and then you'd shoot him right but clearly after playing it for like five minutes i noticed that it, it's very much like it, it felt like uh very gamified yes but it was also trying to represent something real. 
So I feel like this kind of interaction, uh, one of the things that World of Warcraft does really well is it just makes the interactions between things really, really gamey in a in a hearty kind of way, like a way that appeals to me as a gamer, where it's like, it's like, I know that I've set this thing up, now I'm combusting right. it or whatever it might be. Like it's yes. one, two, um, you know, freeze, ice right. lands. There you go. Like that. So when you do like these combinations where it's like, I've built up 10 charges and now that and it's going to add 10% to my this or that, it feels like you're in a place where you have to do that because otherwise you suck, but it doesn't feel rewarding. So it could fall into that category. That would be my complaint about what I saw in the gameplay is it, it might be that the, the toggles are not quite meaty enough and yet you're going to have to do them because if you're, if you're not doing your spell rotation correctly, you'll just be doing less damage but it won't feel rewarding when you un unleash, right. you know, like and, mages and get to me, effect. like always have these interactions of like a casino a little bit, right? Like, so in world of Warcraft, like you'll have the, the free cast of ice lance, right. And it'll shimmer around and it's like, Hey, you got, you know, a crit on your frostbolt, which caused the little shimmer around the ice lance to be a, an automatic crit. And, or, the right. or even like a fire mage, like to your example, pyroblast, right? Like you, you crit twice in a row, boom, you get an instant pyroblast. And it, it's, it's exciting when these things happen. And, and now there's other things that you can do to make your, um, your ignite, uh, happen, like force happen, like to make it happen on, on your own. Um, and it's like, it's, it's like you said, it's in a meaty kind of way. Like it's very gamified in how it's approached, but you yourself know how the kit works and how you can manipulate it in your favor. I just didn't see anything that was really exciting. But again, it's a little, it's a little 15. Exactly like I, I can't, that's where my head is not wrapping around yet <laughs> because I think level 15 and then I have to give them a break because what level 15 gameplay is and close to a final stage of a finished product either. This is I your know. first, I don't know, rework. Iteration. Yeah. But know. like you're, but like you were saying is like exactly, I was thinking of Alterac Valley, putting a bunch of dots yes. um, a warlock, as, yeah. as a, a warlock and then getting that yes. boom sound when you can mm -hmm. throw the shadow bolt and you just like crit the shadow bolt for like yeah. 6k on some guy and just kill him outright. That was a lot of fun. And so those are the sort of interactions that when you see them in a game, you go like, yes. I want to do that. That's fun. And when you see like I'm stacking some effects that I'm going to like cash in for a sweet 10% bonus on my next spell, it doesn't, it doesn't have yeah, the same. I just fun. feel like too, um, and I don't know if, if it can work with the mage, but I would love to see some kind of a secondary resource um be done. Um, and it doesn't have to be for the mage, but again, like I I I really don't like the fact that a fighter or a rogue is gonna use mana. Like I I just yeah, it doesn't gel with me for some. Gladys, were were you thinking like extra resource like uh, Final Fantasy fourteen, where uh, d doesn't the mage have to like stack yes. that element? Right. Yeah. Like yeah. And I was thinking so, something like but, that, and then you're still playing with mana as yes, well. Yes, exactly. Like so, it's not saying you're getting rid of mana, but I I really hate this old school mentality of when people say mana matters because I heard Steven say it, and I just kind of I rolled my eyes a little bit because it's just like. Well, it's hard to mana. back that up when you've got the mana turned off and you have unlimited mana in your showcase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. And so it's just yeah. like I feel like when it comes to a DPS, mana shouldn't matter. What matters is your skill in rotating those buttons to kill your opponent. That is what matters. I wanted to see more of that, like weaving the elements back and right. forth, like empowering your weapon and then like using the weapon's empowerment to interact with the ice that you just put down right before that. Right. It, you know, I, I more of that interaction. What Vladis said towards the beginning. So you, so we keep mm -hmm. dropping the word stacks. We keep hearing that word. And one of the things that Steven said is like, okay, so you, you, you're you going to have an ability that will do five stacks of chill. And then there'll be another ability that once something is chilled, you know, fully chilled, then the stacks become yeah, freeze. And after freeze, you could do like one of your bigger moves and do shatter. Well, you have to do it a lightning bolt to get shatter. Okay, so so when you're doing this many stacks and you're making the whole rotation, for lack of a better term, this complicated. Are 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 you for this? Do you like this? I don't find that to be complicated. It's actually that's super rudimentary. Okay, and that's what I. That's what for me. I look at this and I'm like, this is super plain Jane. Like, and, and again, I can't really critique because if this is what level 15 is supposed to be, 
it's in line with what a level 15 character usually is, right? And it gets more complicated as you get down in levels. But I don't know what Intrepid's thinking. I can't read their minds and say, hey, all these abilities we showed you, they're actually a mixed match of like level one abilities all the way to like level 35 abilities. But we're just at a level 15 template. So don't get confused by that. Like if I Steven need to know was sitting a, here right now, if Steven was sitting here right now, what is it that you would ask him? That Like, what are you really trying to tell us when we're giving these showcases? Are we supposed to look at it in the lens of a level 15 character, in the lens of an end game character, or in the lens of a completely at like building block foundational level class like what lens are we looking at through but also that that if you have already two bars of of abilities like are you just going to be doing horizontal improvement where you're replacing these abilities are you complexifying the abilities are you specializing into being able to use less of them you know because then you're locked in as an ice mage or a lightning mage or you can and for me like or i'm sorry so it's it I talked I talked to Roar about no, this because in my mind, if I was making these classes, I wouldn't have this class system, but if I had to deal with it, I, I would really want all of your abilities to be learned by level 25. So by once you actually pick your secondary augment and you become your true class, then from 26 to 50, all you're doing is customizing. You're literally going into those base mm-hmm. spells you learn from one to twenty-five, and you're starting now to add those augments. You're starting to twist them and to turn them to exactly tailor made to what you want for an endgame character. That's how I would do it personally. So it would make kind of sense for a level 15 character to have that much abilities comparatively to other MMOs. And that would be very different for constructing a class because i know enrique keeps asking like how is this different compared to another mmo i haven't seen many mmos give you that many abilities at such a young level and i think it would be quite interesting to actually have that kind of complexity kind of earlier on than what people are used to because usually that kind of complexity is later saved at an end game level yeah if the leveling is slower you can definitely have that exactly. complexity up front that's what i was <laughs> you read my mind <laughs> ludo being that you yes. play uh you play a lot of guild wars are you are you getting guild war vibes with ashes at all almost not quite i see what they're going for and if they keep going in the direction that they are going it's going to be really close to guild wars 2 um seeing how the mage was playing off of uh, its own fields there with the combos we know other players will be able to play off of those as well and create their own combos. That's on par with Guild Wars 2 combat. So we just need to see more of that. We need to see more of the combos and how things are going to play off of one another. Then maybe it'll be closer to Guild Wars 2. Let me let me ask you, Roar, because um, you said towards the beginning that one, one of the things, okay, we, we we got to see these 16 abilities that they that you actually dissected and they, you actually went and saw every single ability that they had on there and everything. Would you want to see them do another class reveal and show the next abilities from the next class? Or would you rather them do a video finally and, and, and show us how augments work with these abilities? I don't think I, I say this all the time. I do not think they have any idea themselves how augments are to work because we have no abilities for any other classes we don't even have, or the archetypes, we don't even have, well, they might have them, but we haven't seen the other archetypes. So, like, unless they just want to go back to the typical fighter mage example that they've given us a hundred times, here's a warrior charge, look at what happens when we attach Blink to it. Isn't that cool? No, not really, you know? Um, you just have a rogue shadow step at that point. It's it's not really, you know, I don't give a shit about augments. I want mm-hmm. completed classes. Once we have completed our archetypes, once we have completed archetypes, then start talking to me about augments. Like I know everyone really, really wants augments, but look at look at how much conversation and how much, as you said, underwhelming thoughts we can put towards class or these archetype reveals as a whole. If if this is how we feel about the archetypes, do you think the augments are going to make that any better? Like, no. I think they need to perfect their classes, their, their, you know, listen to feedback, get us in there and let it, let us test things, build our archetypes to the best that they can be. Then we'll start working on, them. like, I, I have some great ideas 
just based off of what we saw with the mage, I have some great ideas for augments that uh, I want to put together a video for. Um, you know, a couple examples was imagine that the fighter whirlwind ability. Imagine that with the ball lightning effect. Like, how cool would that shit be? Or you know, the 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 uh, the air airborne attack or airstrike, whatever it was, airstrike, the ranger, the ranger. Pair pair that with Blizzard. <laughs> how cool would that shit be? Like, there's some really cool synergy that you can already imagine. But essentially, that's all augments are, right? They're not going to be game breaking. They might change some abilities 100, percent but I don't really see how, and I won't. I don't even understand how until I can see it happen. How different augments can make these classes feel. But like, if 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 you listen to the text from everything that we've heard and what it says on the wiki, you apply your second augments flavor to your primary archetypes attack. That's it. We're not fundamentally changing anything. Like I said, charge now becomes a blink, right? Instead of shooting, or if I was a ranger, instead of just shooting arrows, now I'm shooting arrows that are imbued with that arcane volley attack, and it shoots like a bunch of arrows, right? That's that's what I think of augments, and I'm really not that excited for that, but hopefully I'm wrong. Do you think then, like, just, just hearing you say that, then that means to me the foundational abilities need to be fun and complex right off the start. Because if that's all you are doing, we can't have simple abilities. Well, and they have to be then. different too for each of the subclasses, for lack of a better term. Um, all these different mage classes. What makes this mage class different from this mage class, different from this mage class, different from this mage class? Because remember, we do not, we do not get any new abilities when we pick our second archetype. When we choose our class, we get nothing new. The same thing that we've been using from 1 to 25, we will continue to use from 25 to 50. Maybe now instead of charging, I'm blinking, right? That's, so that's the best way I can think about that. To me, it really comes down to um, two things that I have questions that I just never had questions about. How many... Um, uh, oh. ability bars are we going to be able to have in Ashes of Creation if we're only going to have a two maximum like what we just saw 16, 16 abilities then Steven's um, statement earlier where he says each class is going to have anywhere between 31 to 40 abilities that means you're not going to be able to choose everything exactly. so as that, no. so as a mage that means yes you're going to have different schools but maybe you can actually decide, hey, because people are asking, can I just be a, a frost mage? Possibly. You could have enough ab abilities in your kit to just do frost. You know what I mean? Maybe if you a little remember bit of during Alpha 1 with the simplistic tree that we had, you were putting points into each of your abilities. And you could stack like three, four, five points into one ability if you wanted to. And make that right. one ability stronger than the rest. So you could go with an all... Ice build if you wanted to and go with a fire build and everything. What me and Ludo were talking about after that live stream is um if you're gonna have all the synergy, I'm I'm wondering if weather is going to come into play where mage is concerned. So if he is using fire abilities and it's raining, you know, your fire gets freaking dampened a bit. You know, your 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 DPS isn't as strong as it normally would be. However, if you're doing electricity and it's raining, that electricity could just bounce off all that water and just become much more powerful that would be cool i don't know mike it's another concern i had sorry like go ahead Vas. this might take I, us off. i was just gonna no i was just gonna say i don't like that i no? i only want weather to be positive for classes not negatives so if you are a fire mage i don't think you should be punished because it's raining like i well, think you should still do your normal damage and thrown in liberty first so right, right. liberty is fun day uh, I mean, one the, thing that the, the, the whole battle could start with a dry land and all of a sudden it just thundercloud appears. We saw how that happens in Unreal Engine. And then the rain starts to roll in and then all of a sudden your your fire skills are going to be a little hindered. I kind of like the but idea. It's a cool idea for sure. But when you when you really want to put it on paper and kind of talk about, all right, how is this a benefit? How is it a benefit to anybody other than an elemental mage? What is an assassination rogue going to do in the rain? He's invisible. Be wet. But, I, but, I, <laughs> but, but invisible, we're just using just rain as an example there. Start. Let's say it started to freaking snow. If it was a blizzard, then your ice abilities are going to get stronger. Right. You but know? that only affects well, and, and I mean, anybody that they pair with a mage. 
they could they they're more susceptible in the cold now and they can get a runny nose and because rogues use poisons <laughs> they're more susceptible to poison because they're sick yes that's how they can do it <laughs> anyways with my wet daggers they can, hide, they can hide in the mud from you predator. know something that something that concerns me and i haven't really seen anybody talk about and maybe i should talk about this in a whole separate topic is you know they say that risk and reward right and they want they want group combat to be important and matter does it not look like we're just going for an even though they don't want to admit it does it not look like we're just going for another zerg mentality how many single target spells did you guys actually see like three right chain yeah. lightning hits everything blizzard hits everything right Fall lightning hits everything like well i, I never even I mean, caught are, that is there a cap on what it hits yeah and melee, melee attacks hit everyone like, they're all, they all out, i mean they whip out the great area. sword it hits everything in front of them like if this is supposed to be some super like group-based game you know like everybody wants to reference old school wow when you had to cc seven monsters and pull the eighth one single and beat the shit out of it you can't drop a blizzard on one little dude or it's gonna wait you know it just makes me wonder like what what their overall goal and it's like that with every if everything we've seen so far what like, did you feel how, how did you feel when they pulled out that great sword I, dude, as a mage don't even get me, don't even get me started on no a no spell I, sword. I, about, I know i'm all about gandalf a sword like gandalf yeah come on give me like mage armor and arcane and arcane weapons and let me be a spell sword that do you want a battle mage legit. It would be, yeah, it would be, if they can actually that pull it off, epic. which, you know, the mage and the fighter or fighter mage would be super duper cool. But then, you know, you start talking about that glass cannon thing. And, uh, you know, we got like bubble on an 18 second cooldown. Like that was kind of neat, but uh, I like the idea that they're going with it. But then again, it all comes down to balance. How is a battle mage different than a mage mage, which is stronger you know, uh, they're they're like outside of the class fantasy of wanting to play a battle mage. What benefit is there to me getting into melee range in my cloth armor and swinging a sword, or maybe yeah. heavy armor if if somehow heavy armor can augment, but the, rather than just setting thirty yards back and spamming chain lightning, like what benefit is there outside of the class fantasy? I mean, because you want to, exactly. Yeah, because you get a sword. I, I don't. People were <laughs> complaining about that in the forums. That it felt so uh, disjarring and uh, immersion breaking for a mage to be, have a great sword, and I'm like, bro, like, have you not played Dungeons and Dragons? You can literally right. do anything in that game, like or watch any anime ever. Yeah, I mean, you're you're <laughs> yeah. limited by your imagination in Dungeons and Dragons. Like, you can literally do anything, and if you play with a really excellent dungeon master, you can do anything. And so, I like the fact that there is a game that can actually be rep represented. Um, in that and I really hope the profession system when it comes to crafting I really hope they allow you to actually get stats and put it on any kind of light medium or heavy armor because again if you're a mage you can wear heavy armor you know what I mean so you should be able to put intellect or the intellect um, stat on heavy armor if you want to um, because again you, you're custom making your own class here I, I just feel like um so compared, Again, it's, it's, to, and I hate to cut you off, but compared to other MMOs, if we're if we're all of a sudden putting heavy armor on a mage, are right. we not taking anything away from the mage for wearing heavy armor? Not at all, oh, because you, again, you got to think about it in ESO. You can do that in ESO. Cloth armor increases your damage. No, heavy cloth, armor. Cloth armor increases your magical defense. Heavy yeah. armor increases your physical defense. So. Because you are a mage, if you're going to be in combat, you're going to want heavy armor, but you're more susceptible to magic spells because you're wearing heavy armor. You know what I mean? And so if you want to wear medium armor, then it's like a 50-50 of both. You know what I mean? It's not the best, but it's not the worst. You know what I mean? So it really just comes into how you want to play. How do you want to be? If you want to be a glass cannon and you want to uh, be very hard for uh, melee players to kill you, then you want heavy armor. As a clothy, right? As a traditional clothy. So, yeah, I, I think it's... Okay, so the part that I'm having a hard time wrapping my brain about is this sounds like something where I would choose um, mage and then my secondary class tank and combine those two. But what, from what you're saying is I don't have to necessarily choose the tank as my secondary. I can choose summoner or whatever and still be able to go ahead and just put heavy armor on and and play the role of that particular 
class. You, yeah. you guys follow me? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. It's just the Maybe. augments aren't going to be suited. Like if you pick the tank, you're probably going to get more augments that are going to be more defensive mitigation uh, applicable. But if you were to pick a summoner or some other archetype, it might be more damage component applicable. But you can still put heavy armor on, uh, on especially if you're going to be in melee range, because typically in melee range, you're going to be swiped back and forth by monsters. So you want to protect mm -hmm. yourself. You know what I mean? And I like the fact that the game doesn't limit you. Because again, in WoW, if you're a warlock, you only have the option of cloth. You can't bleed weather. You can't be anything else. So I like that the fact that Ashes is going to most unkillable piece of shit in the game. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, it's you know, I like the fact that the game actually gives you a choice in the matter when it comes to what you're going to wear. One ability we did not see make a return from Alpha One. I don't know if you guys remember if you were an Alpha One. Was, Prismatic uh, beam. Yes, way overpowered. You got to admit that was overpowered. So the fact that they took it out was actually no surprise. But, but I don't think it's out. I just think they didn't show it. There was, really a, there so? was a lot of stuff from Alpha One. Like we didn't get like Black I, hole? I talked about some of that. Yeah, the the gravity wells gone. The uh the oh, yeah. essence that that beam you could hit him with and it would return mana to you. That's gone. Fireball mm -hmm. is completely reworked into an instant cast now. It's not some. I mean, if they had prismatic on beam on their their bar, they would have killed those flowers quicker. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking earlier about um, all these AOE spells. Again, I just think they're trying to just show the spells they currently have ready. I hope in my heart of hearts that they actually give you really good choices in the matter. If you want to go more single target, go prismatic be uh, beam. If you want to go more spread AOE, then you want to do blizzard. You know what I mean? And it's that risk reward of what you want to choose to, to get. All I see is one of these castle sieges and you got, 30 or 40 freaking mages doing AOEs all over the freaking place. It, it makes me think of Guild Wars 2, though, because if they're going more action combat, combat AOE and cone effects just make more sense. Well, in a, in a Castle Siege setting, of course, because you're surrounded by hundreds of people. But again, it really just depends on your role. Like, again, if you're playing with very methodical and uh, tactician people, you may like you're going to have rogues that are going to be completely single target because you're thinking everybody's spec for AOE. So not people are going to do good, but you can have a whole line of rogues that are specific, like assassins, like to go in and just kill someone really freaking fast. You're like, oh, my God, like this rogue is insane. Like he has all single target spells. And you just didn't think that was going to happen. Like you have to have a kind of mix and match of that. Like you can't just assume that everybody's going to be spec for AOE, even though it seems like the logical choice. So. So is it the next live stream that they were talking about that we are probably uh, more than likely going to see the Cyclops? That's supposed to be the next stream, I, I believe. And I'm like, I'm, you I'm going to kind of guess if that is going to happen. I think we're going to see the mage again. Probably we're going to see the other abilities, the earth and the uh, the fire ones that we didn't get to see this time. After that reveal, they're supposed to be bringing up the rogue very quickly. And Ludo's going to they say that. The rogue is going to be announced uh, right, right after they get done with the Cyclops reveal. The rogue is next. I don't know if it's going to be the full 16 abilities, but yeah, they said rogue next. I so. want them to take a break on archetypes, to be honest. I, just, I, really <laughs> I do. They, they can take a break after rogue. Okay. They, just, they need to get them in the game. And that they just if, need to get you them in the sneak peek, it, It's nice to finally see that they're, they're showing the 16 abilities. I mean, the, the fact that we actually saw full bars this time is it, something that we haven't seen yet. So it's nice to see that we're starting to get what those abilities are. Sooner or later, we're going to be able to actually go into the wiki and actually look at each of these classes now and realize what exactly all the abilities are. But if you want a sneak peek of the rogue, just go play World of Warcraft. That's really true. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're going to do another verbatim copy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Backstab. <laughs> A rogue is, we're gonna see combo <laughs> points. A rogue is a rogue is a rogue, man. It, like you can you can change some looks and stuff, but I mean, what what can you do with two daggers? You know? I, I I know it's kind of off topic when you know when, from the mage when we're talking about rogue and everything, but do you think we're going to end up getting wow stealth quality in ashes? I, I think we're gonna get different versions of stealth. Yeah, because I thought Wild did gonna, it really well. I, I, I love. I think it's going to be like 
like Predator, where you can kind of see it if it's moving. Yeah, I, I love accidentally I, I walking like past that. someone who's stealth and just kind of get that sound trigger. You know, the like. You seen what the rogues are doing in classic hardcore? No. You, are you aware of classic hardcore? No. What's going on? Yeah. Well, so yeah. there's this thing right now going on. I'm sorry to get off topic, but there's this thing going around in World of Warcraft. It's called classic hardcore. So. The community basically dedicated one server on classic World of Warcraft where everybody follows the rules and it's hardcore. One death equals you delete. You're done. It's like hardcore and Diablo. And there's a whole add-on for it. Everybody's doing it. Well, there's this uh there's this rogue that's going around stream sniping the lower the lower level snipers. He's like a level 50 rogue, so he's pretty high. He's going in like he's an undead rogue, and he's going into like Westfall and shit where like level level 20s are. And he'll wait for like the mages and hunters to kill a monster, and he'll walk up and sit right on top of that guy's stealth. So because you're not flagged in Westfall for PvP, so the alliance will run up to the mob to right click it to loot it. But like right when they come in to range, you because you know how you get close enough to a rogue in World of Warcraft, you can see it. They right. the, he's like faded out, but you can see it. They get just close enough for him to unstealth. And instead of right clicking the mob to loot, they right click him and auto attack him. Attack and he him. Fucking kills him. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's awesome. Leave, so leave good. it to wild players to figure oh, something out like that. Yes. It's, dude, it's so funny. It, it, there are so many clips on YouTube about it. It's hilarious. Or he'll sit right on top of like the peace bloom, the little herb, and they'll run up to Cleric, click the herb and take it, but they click him and auto attack him and it flags him. And then he just laughs and and shot some. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Oh, I love this guy yeah, already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. That's it. We're done. We're ending it. We'll catch you next show. Cheers. Bye.